Hi everyone, I'll be showing how you can install Zorin OS in a dual boot without using a USB drive or a DVD. Zorin OS is great for those new to Linux as it offers a Windows-like experience that makes the transition smooth and intuitive. So to get started, we're going to download it, going to Zorin.com, and then going to download, and then there's the Pro version, and scrolling down, there's the core version for basic use, and there's the education version with educational software for schools and students. They are both free. I'm going to download the core version. And then you can put your email address to subscribe to the newsletter. I'm just going to skip to download. And if the download's too slow, you can download from a different server, and you can select a nearby mirror for a faster download. And so there's the ISO file. And I'm going to mount it, so right click and mount, or hit enter, and I'm going to open. All right, and it's been mounted. It's been mounted on my D drive, and now I'm going to open up disk management, start disk management, and in disk management, we have my disk here, disk zero, and it's about 476 gigabytes. It's my SSD, and it's where I have Windows installed. And then here is where I have the ISO mounted for Zorin OS. And now I've mounted it here in Windows, so it's only seen here. And if I reboot, I won't be able to boot from it. So I'll create a new partition on my SSD drive just for the installation media. I'm going to use some free space on my C drive, so I'm going to select it, right click, shrink volume. And the ISO is about 3.5 gigabytes, so I'll do 4,000, about 4 gigs shrink and there's my unallocated space right click new simple volume next 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 file system will be fat32 and then the volume label i'll label that as iso next finish all right and there's my new f drive i'm going to go back into explorer and so my d drive i'm going to copy all the content and then go into my new f drive and paste all right, everything has been copied over. Going back into disk management. And then now I'm gonna set aside some free space for Zorin OS. So I'll shrink the C drive again. Right click, shrink volume. And I'll do about 100 gigs, so 100,000. Shrink. All right, and there's my unallocated space that I'll use for Zorin OS. And now my installation media partition. As long as you have a modern computer, your BIOS should be able to detect and boot from this partition. Now I'm going to reboot my computer and go into the BIOS. In your BIOS, ensure that secure boot is disabled. And if you have fast boot, disable it as well. And now I'm going to do a one-time boot into the installation media partition. It's labeled as UFI OS and how I can confirm that. Go back into Windows. Open up a command prompt as administrator. Type in bcd edit space forward slash enum space firmware. And at the bottom, you can see there's partition F, the F drive that was created, and the description UFI OS. All right, it has booted into the installation media partition. And I have here try or install Zorn OS with safe graphics and with modern NVIDIA drivers. So if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you can select this option. For me, I'm going to be selecting the first option. All right, and I get the welcome screen. And before installing, there's going to be some initial steps that I'm going to do. So I'm going to select Try Zorin OS. And I'm going to open up Gparted. Authenticate. All right, and Gparted comes up. And Gparted is similar to disk management in Windows. It's going to show my disk and my partitions. So I have here dev sda1. It's my EFI partition for Windows. And then dev sda2, it's a Microsoft Reserve partition. Dev sda3 is my C drive in Windows. And there's my unallocated space that I set aside in Windows. And then dev sda4 is the installation media partition. And then dev sda5 is the recovery partition. So going to the unallocated space, I'm going to be creating two new partitions, a separate EFI partition for Zorin OS, and another partition with everything else. By default, in the Zorin OS installer, it will use the same EFI partition that is used for Windows. 
The EFI partition is where the boot files are located, so it would then have both the Windows and Zorin OS boot files, which may seem fine, but Microsoft is known for removing anything not related to Windows in this partition, and this could happen, for example, after a Windows update. And if the Zorin OS boot files are not there, then I won't be able to boot into Zorin OS. So I'll be creating a separate EFI partition for Zorin OS. Right click, new, and then the size for it, I'll do 512 megabytes. And then the file system will be FAT32, and I'll label it as Zorin EFI, add. And so we see here the new partition, and then I'm gonna hit the check mark to apply, apply, close. All right, and we see the new partition has been created, dev SDA6. The next thing I need to do is to ensure that the Zorin OS installer doesn't detect this Windows EFI partition, SDA1. So I'll be removing the boot and ESP flags on this partition. And then after I'm done, I'll put the flags back. So I'll right click, manage flags, and I'll have it set as Microsoft data, close. And now back at the unallocated space, I'm going to create a partition, which will have everything else. So I'll right click, new, and then the file system I'll be using is LVM2 PV. LVM is Logical Volume Manager, and it's primarily used to make your storage configuration more flexible. Add. All right, and there we see it. And now apply, apply, close. And there it is. And I'm going to close Gparted. I'm going to open up a terminal. Terminal. And I'm going to sudo in. And I'm going to type in list block to see the new partitions that I created. I'll list block. And then so there at the bottom, SDA6 and then SDA7. Now in LVM, I'm going to create a new physical volume. And it's going to be using SDA7. So PV creates dev SDA7. So the physical volume has been created, and they'll create a volume group. So VG create, and I'll call it Zorin VG for a volume group, and then dev SDA7. And then now I'm going to create the logical volumes. So I'm going to create two one for swap and one for root. LV create Zorin VG N. I'll give it the name of swap, and then dash L, and then the size of it. I have 12 gigs of RAM here, so I'll do 12 gigs. And then the next logical volume will be for everything else. So LV create Zorin VG N, the name for it, I'll call it root L, and it'll be the remaining free space, 100% free. All right, and it has been created, and I'll do LVS, and we can see the logical volumes. And now I'm ready to install Zorin OS. I'm going to close, close, install Zorin OS, and select my language, English, continue, keyboard layout, continue, and then I'll download updates while installing Zorin OS, and I'll install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware and additional media formats. And I'm not going to participate in the sentence. I'm going to remain anonymous, continue. All right, and in this screen, it asks you to select the partitions that you want to use. So first is my EFI partition. I'm gonna scroll down and there is dev SDA6. So this is gonna be my EFI partition for Zorin OS. Change, and I'm gonna select EFI system partition, okay. And then going back up, and then I'm going to be selecting my root partition. And I'm gonna to go to change and then use as, I'll be using ext4 as the file system, and then the mount point will be slash, and I'm gonna format it, okay. And then there's swap, and I'm gonna go to change, and then use as swap area, okay. All right, and the partitions have been set, and it says down here, device for bootloader installation, and the installer is going to use the first EFI partition it detects. So it's going to be using dev SDA6. Select the same partition, SDA6. And then install now. 
and then ask you to confirm the changes and then continue. And here it asks to select your region, continue the screen, fill in your name, computer name, username, and password. And for me, I'm going to be selecting require my password to log in each time and then continue. All right, and it's installing Zorin OS and you can click the arrow at the bottom here and it'll show the current status. And then you can click again to get out of it. And so this will take a little bit of time to install. All right, installation completed. Now, when I hit restart, it should automatically boot into Zorin, but to confirm, I'm going to restart and then go back into my BIOS. And in my boot over here, boot option number one is the Windows Boot Manager, boot option number two is UFI OS, and boot option number three is Ubuntu. And it's saying Ubuntu because Zorin is based off of Ubuntu. So I'll have to change it so that this is boot option number one. And then save changes and exit. All right, the grub bootloader comes up for Zorin OS. I'm going to boot into it. Log in. All right, and I'm now in Zorin OS. And I'm just going to skip the tour. No thanks. And now I'm going to go into Gparted. And as you can see here, by default, Zorin is not installed on your computer compared to earlier where it was available in the live environment. So I'm just going to install it, install, put in my password. All right, it's installed and I'm going to open it up, put in my password. All right, and now I'm going to select dev SDA one, right click, manage flags, and I'm going to put the flags back. So when I select boot, it will automatically select ESP as well and then close. And then dev SDA4 is the installation media partition. I no longer need it, so I'm going to remove it. Right click, delete. And then I'm going to put the space on dev SDA7. So right click, resize, move. And then I'm going to extend it, resize. And now I'm going to apply. Apply. All right, and it has completed. Close. Now I'm going to close Gparted. And I'm going to close this window as well. And I'm going to open up a terminal. And I'm going to sudo in. Put in my password. And I'm going to type in PVS to show my physical volumes. And we can see there SDA7. And there's 3.91 gigabytes free. And then I'm going to type in VGS, which will show my volume groups. And it also shows the 3.91 gigabytes available. So I'm going to extend my root partition so it uses the free space. And I'm going to type in df-h. This will show the amount of space I have. And then we can see the root partition and its current size, 84 gigabytes. And then now I'm going to extend it, lv extend dash r, which will resize automatically, dash l, and then plus 100% free. And it will be to dev mapper slash zorin dash dash vg dash root. All right, add has been extended. And if I do a df-h again, and we can see it's now at 88 gigabytes. And lastly, the grub bootloader menu, it only had Zorin OS. There was no Windows entry, so I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna use vi to open up the etsy default grub file. So vi etsy default grub. And then I'm gonna look for the line grub disable OS prober. I'm gonna use the letter J to scroll down and then go to the pound sign and then hit X to remove and then hit colon WQ to write and quit. And OS Prober is used to look for other operating systems. So in this case, Windows, do an OS dash Prober as a pre-check and we see it's found the Windows Boot Manager. And now I'm gonna make a new grub configuration file. So grub make config dash O, I'll be to boot grub grub.cfg. All right, the new configuration file has been created and it's found the Windows Boot Manager and now I'm gonna reboot my computer. All right, and Grub comes up and there's Zorin OS and there's the Windows Boot Manager. So I'm gonna boot into it. All right, and I'm able to boot into Windows as expected. So that's it, that's how you can install Zorin OS in a dual boot without using a USB drive or DVD. I hope this video has been useful and I thank you for watching. Bye now.